Good evening, and welcome to the Earl Cameron Theater. I'm Darren Herbert, and it's my pleasure and privilege to be your host as we celebrate Bermudian talent. Good evening and welcome to the 35th annual Premier's Concert. Few words are more appropriate tonight than those of legendary choreographer and director Debbie Allen, who said, but out of limitations comes creativity. While we cannot enjoy this exciting event live, I am delighted that through the hard work of the Department of Culture, the talented local artists performing tonight can still bring joy through a different format to all those watching this year. Initially created in 1985 by then cultural officer Ms. Ruth E. Thomas, the Premier's Concert has consistently highlighted the best of young Bermudian talent and creativity. In recent times, the Department of Culture has recognized that as culture continues to evolve, so must their programs. For the first time, this concert will feature our young people and a selection of Bermuda's best artistic talent from various age groups. Those performing will reflect those who the department has recently supported through various programs, contributions, and sponsorships. Judging by the program lineup, we are certainly in for a great show. The artists performing tonight have participated in the Bermudian Heartbeats programming, Uncover the Arts Saturday Night Live series, performed at Senior Citizens Programming, and have been recipients of funding from the Bermuda Arts Council and the Department of Culture. Performances will include dance, music, film, the best of Bermuda will be on display. Also on display will be the investment in artist development and excellence by the government of Bermuda, which we are committed to continuing. I hope for those of you watching, this is a welcome respite to everything we have all endured over the past year. I thank the Minister, Dr. The Honorable Ernest Peets, and the Department of Culture who organizes this annual event, which continues to be one of the most popular on our calendar. I also thank all of our performers tonight for the devotion they have shown to their art form in preparing their performances. They have all had to adapt to changing circumstances, but have worked diligently to bring this production to you this year. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to sit back and enjoy the 35th annual Premier's Concert. Sade Lee. This Cedar Bridge Academy student first caught the eye of the Department of Culture when she performed at their annual Bermudian Heartbeats Christmas concert, giving a unique rendition of Hail to Bermuda on her ukulele. She's 18 years old, but has already competed in Bermuda Idol, Bermuda Sunday Best, and Bermuda's Festival on Stage competitions. She's multi-talented. She acts at school in the Noir Youth Theater Company and with Gilbert and Sullivan. She's trained in hip hop, tap and ballet at Anointed Step Ministry School. She's performed at the Agricultural Exhibition, Harbor Nights, Summer Sundays in the Park, the Premier's Luncheon with the A Tempo Performance Choir, and provided background vocals for Last Call. She's recently been accepted into Full Sail University to pursue her studies in music. She'll be singing, a Whitney Houston favorite, I Believe in You and Me. Sade Lee. Okay. 
While she plays violin like a virtuoso, Elizabeth Weyer is only 12 years old. She began studying at the age of two with Dr. Latanya Ellerby at the Bermuda School of Music. She was due to sit her Associated Board of Royal School of Music grade eight exam this year, and then COVID hit. She attends BHS and is a member of multiple ensembles at school. Outside of school, she's a member of the Bermuda School of Music junior and senior orchestras, and she joined the Bermuda Philharmonic at the age of 11. She's been a member of the National Children's Orchestra of Great Britain since the age of eight. And she has successfully auditioned for the Suzuki Youth Orchestra of the Americas twice. She's won the Eileen Morrison Scholarship and Bermuda Philharmonic Awards. Elizabeth has represented Bermuda, playing her violin in the UK, Chicago, Michigan, and the happiest place on earth, Disney World. Elizabeth will be playing It Ain't Necessarily So, composed by George Gershwin, arranged by Yasha Heifetz, accompanied by Raymond George on piano.
Xander Miller is a piano player at the Bermuda School of Music, and he studies under Oliver Grant. He's been playing since the age of six, and he is now 18 years old. He's completed the grade eight associated board of the Royal Schools of Music exam, the highest you can achieve. He attends Work Academy and is a part of their jazz band. He also plays trumpet and cornet with the Bermuda Regiment Band and has played the Last Post and the Ravelli for the past three years during the Remembrance Day Parade. Xander is also a junior elite cyclist for the Bermuda National Team. He won the Junior Caribbean Time Trials in Guyana and the 2020 Junior National Time Trial and Criterion Championships, performing Let It Go from Frozen, composed by Kristen Anderson Lopez and Robert Lopez. Here is Xander Miller. Milton Raposo. He's an artist, a filmmaker, and founder of Method Media, and former deputy chair of the Bermuda Arts Council. This is an excerpt from Milton's documentary, Fabric, which was supported by the Department of Culture and the Cultural Legacy Fund. Since 1849, the Portuguese have been coming to Bermuda, leaving behind all they know. They bring their vibrant customs, traditions, language, and their own personal histories. Many left, but those that stayed would change Bermuda forever. They've woven themselves into the fabric of Bermudian society. This is their story. The Wooding Report of 1969, which looked into the riots of April 1968, would go on to state that of the Portuguese, theirs is not a significant role in the community life of Bermuda. They stand apart, backstage, or in the wings. 
The real imposition would be the Board of Immigration Policy that would restrict wives from joining their husbands. This would keep families apart for years. Back in that day, uh, the Portuguese workers had to work here for seven years before, his, before they could bring their families with them. And to the best of my knowledge, the Portuguese were the only people that were discriminated against in this way. So my father came to Bermuda in 1951, and he initially came to assist in the reforestation of the Bermuda cedar trees. It was during the Bermuda cedar tree blight. My parents dated for seven years, and back then dating, dating in, in, entailed writing letters back and forth. No phone calls, no physical presence. And then my dad returned back to the Azores. My parents got married in November, and then my mother became pregnant with Maria, so she had a pregnancy um, overseas in the Azores, still at home with her parents. This would be in stark contrast to couples of other nationalities who were allowed to be in Bermuda together. It was wondered why citizens of Britain's oldest ally endured this when nationals from former enemies like Germany and Italy did not. We are scared, in a sense, to fight. I don't know now, but back then, we don't want trouble. And that I think has a link with our faith, too. You know, you just do whatever your boss tells you to do, you know, and respect that, and don't fight about it. And that's exactly what happened with us. The policy would force men to routinely send money back to the Azores. They had families to support, and the wages they earned in Bermuda would serve this purpose. My dad would write letters, would send um, money as, as he could to help support for the food and for the clothing um, and for the necessities that, that they needed. The irony of all of this was that many of the Portuguese emigrating west were just trading one set of hardships for another. In the early 20th century, the Portuguese were living through uncertain times. There would be rebellions and presidential assassinations. Portugal's economy was under constant threat of defaulting until Finance Minister Dr. Antonio Salazar became Prime Minister in 1932. He would levy numerous taxes that eventually stabilized the economy, much to the dismay of many overburdened Portuguese. Way back then, uh, the, the wage, the daily wage, not even enough to support your family, you know, but that, that I mean, everybody was that way. I mean, that's the way it was. And everybody wanted to go overseas. Well, I came here to get a better life. At the time, the life in the Azores was miserable. We had the dictator for 40 some years and I had no opportunity there. Even though I was an electrician, but we had no, no much work to do there at that time. Antonio Salazar was Portugal's 100th and longest serving prime minister. He was a complex authoritarian who identified as a conservative and a nationalist. He repressed political freedoms and used censorship to quash opposition. Times was very strict. We didn't know too much about what was going on in Lisbon. And I think also the priests did used to control almost everything. So we were thinking that Salazar was right. But uh, we didn't know much about uh, what was going on outside the, uh, our country. He avoided the glamorous trappings of politics, which put him out of step with other European dictators. During the Second World War, Portugal adopted armed neutrality, but cooperated with both the Allies and the Axis powers. Portugal was an original member of international organizations such as NATO and the OECD during his rule. 
but his wars in the 1960s with Portugal's African colonies, Angola, Mozambique, and Guinea-Bissau, would drag the country down. And a lot of the men were either going to work or going to war. And the men had to make that decision. You know, am I going to go to Africa and fight in a war? Or am I going to flee from here and, and try to try to, you know, make a life of myself in the United States of America, in Canada or Bermuda, if I can. And they wanted to fulfill their dreams, to have the means to, to be independent with their, with their spouse and their children. And everybody was scared way back then because of the colonial wars. They take you down, recruit you, then send you overseas, and some of them never came back. You heard a lot of things about Salazar. Nobody wanted to be under him. Everybody just want to leave there, you know. If you could, you just want to leave here. Yeah. Salazar was removed from power after suffering a brain hemorrhage in 1968, but still believed he was in control of the government up until he died in 1970. The Salazar regime would finally come to a peaceful end during the Carnation Revolution in 1974. The dynamic contemporary gospel duo Last Call was formed in 2015 by Adrian Jones and Tracre Aswood. In 2017, they were signed to Faith Management, and the following year, they landed a record deal with super producer Fred Jerkins on the Dark Child Gospel record label. Their mega hit, Victory, spent over 30 weeks at number one on the Billboard charts. And Last Call was awarded a BMI Trailblazer of Gospel Award in March 2020. Last Call were the recipients of a grant from the Ministry of Youth, Culture, and Sport in 2019 towards their tours. They're performing with their backup singers tonight, Terry Lightborn, Kezia Ferbert, and Deanna Dickinson. They'll be performing their very own award-winning hit, Victory. Well, personally, we want to thank you guys for having us this evening. Right where you are, we want you to sing along with us. This is a song of victory. By the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered, made complete. Now I'm walking in victory, yeah. By the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered, made complete. Now I'm walking in victory. Let's sing that together. Sing by the hand. By the hand hey. of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered. Now Sing that again by the hand. Sing, I've been set free. Now I'm walking in. Oh, yes, I am. Said I'm walking in victory. Said I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. I got my joy back. Oh, walking in victory. Said I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. I got my peace back. By the hand, by the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free. To heal, to never make And now I'm walking in victory. By the hand of the Almighty, everybody say. By the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free. To heal, to never make And now I'm walking in victory. Are you walking in victory? Walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. Walking in I got victory. my joy back. Got my joy back. Said I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. Are you walking in victory? Walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. Got my peace back. Got my peace back. Said I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. Walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory.
We got the victory. We got the victory. Victory. We got the victory. Sing it with us right now. We got the victory. Yeah. Victory. We got the victory. We got the victory. Victory. We got the victory. Under the direction of Liz Pimentel, the In Motion School of Dance aims to provide dance education performance opportunities previously unavailable to Bermuda's dancers. They're celebrating their 24th year of dance excellence. Several dancers under their instruction have recently earned scholarships to numerous established dance programs to pursue dance careers overseas. We're talking places as far afield as the University of Arizona and the Alvin Ailey Dance Company. They recently acquired the Somerset School of Dance and will be offering new opportunities for students to take accredited Royal Academy of Dance examinations. The students performing tonight are between the ages of 12 and 15. They'll be performing Savior, an original piece choreographed by Candice Comer Smith. Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, In Motion School of Dance. <laughs> Working title, one of Bermuda's top bands. And this energetic group of musicians loves to play, dance, and party in any genre. The band was formed in 2008 by the late great Fraser Laidlaw Smith. And the group is filled with seasoned musicians who come from all kinds of backgrounds. The band performed 
in the Department of Culture's Uncover the Arts program, the Saturday Night Live concert series, and are scheduled to perform in the upcoming Creatives Lives right out on the City Hall steps. They'll be playing Watermelon Sugar by Harry Styles, Sweet Lovin', an original song by their very own Serafina Durant, and their original mashup of Perm and Juice by Bruno Mars and Lizzo. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you work and title. One, two, three. It tastes like strawberries on a summer evening. And it sounds just like a song. I want your baby.
here down just to sit down and sit still. Come on, baby. It's my birthday.
Good evening, Honorable Premier and performers, and to the audience watching at home. This is my inaugural Premier's concert, and as the Minister of Youth, Culture, and Sport, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to thank you for viewing this year's event. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we decided to host this as a virtual event with safety in mind. To those watching at home, we're thankful that you have taken time to support some of Bermuda's talented artists. As you may know, this event was originally scheduled to take place last year, but for obvious reasons, it was postponed. But this time around, we felt it important to proceed with the show in a virtual format, because as a government, as well as a ministry, we're committed to recognizing the accomplishments and the contributions of Bermuda's performing artists and creatives. The Premier's concert was first introduced in December of 1985 by then Cultural Affairs Officer Ms. Ruth E. Thomas, MBE, JP, as a way of providing a platform to showcase Bermuda's performing and visual artists of excellence. It has continuously evolved over its three decades of history. And as this event has always served as an opportunity to pay tribute to our musicians, our dancers, singers, spoken word artists, and others, for their hard work, their sacrifice, and their dedication. This has been a very difficult year for so many sectors of our community, including our performing artists and our creatives. And over the last year, to help ease their burdens, the Department of Culture has made it a priority to seek out safe, secure, and public ways to showcase talented Bermudians. This year, for the first time, we featured artists who were supported by the Department of Culture through various programs contributions and sponsorships. We have artists who have participated in the Bermuda Heartbeats programming, Uncover the Arts Saturday Night Live series, Senior Citizen programming, and those who were recipients of sponsorship from the Bermuda Arts Council and the Department of Culture. Yes, our country has truly been challenged over the past year, but in some small way, we have events such as this, which provide us with an opportunity to be uplifted by the gifts of our fellow Bermudians. The Ministry of Youth, Culture and Sport will continue to champion the talents of our community and provide them with the support and platforms that will help them thrive. It is indeed my pleasure to thank you for watching the 2021 Premier's Concert. Please join me in enjoying the final performance of the evening by the very talented Nikosi Hollis, also known by his stage name, Dakari Love. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Peets. Dakari Love, born in Cozy Hollis, is a rising Bermudian star. He's a singer and a songwriter. He released his first single, Insanity, in 2018, followed by Burning Love and Warrior, which charted at number one on local radio stations. This 22-year-old launched his debut album, Renaissance, in September 2020, to incredible success. The album was supported in part by funds from the Bermuda Arts Council. He wowed the Department of Culture performing at their seniors book launch in 2019. Dakari aims to push the boundaries of his artistry, to elevate the standard of modern day music in Bermuda. Today, he'll be performing his original song, Young, from his new album. And he'll follow that with Warrior, accompanied by singer Kiana Madeiras and rapper classic, Dakari Love. Hey, hey, don't know what's happening lately, and it's driving me crazy. Hey, the complex cannot save you, it starts way deep within us. Yeah, we just keep rolling on. Roll with me and you'll see Some has the worries that we Fight every day in our heads But I say my prayers To wash my fears away Hey, hey What does it mean to be young When you're on the run But I want you to know 
your young and bold This life is worth more than gold Just understand that your power is unstoppable Hey, yeah, your power is unstoppable Hey, your power uh, look, check it, the flow changed but the beat did it Just like the systemic problems that's deep in it the power strives in our community is one love and that love is unity is one love and that love is unity breaking barriers is how we roll you can gentrify but you can touch my soul <laughs> i'm unstoppable because i write my wrongs like i write these songs i'm powerful yes i'm unstoppable what does it mean to be young when you're on the run But I want you to know You're young and bold This life is worth more than gold Just understand that your power is unstoppable Head up, chest out When I strut in the building And I've had my downfalls Yeah, I've had my moments No, I did not come here to play So swing the other way I'm here to stay Not backing down from you No, I won't try to feed you lies They're here to fantasize You are deep down inside Cause I'm a They try to tell me who they want me to be Are you forgetting I'm free? So many things trying to bring me down But you forget I'm a queen and I'ma wear my crown, yeah And your opinion don't matter to me I'ma make it just you ain't it Cause I'm a Busting, breaking through ceilings I'm feeling what wasn't seen to them How will we all deceive it then? I got this feeling that maybe one day we'll make it uh, The boxes in And they still put me in I keep these settings still pushing I keep my hand on your handle And I ain't let it go right now Cause I'ma let them know You never know where you headed So best to waste that you head up the bed The energy cause one day it'll come back to you I'm a warrior On behalf of all the artists you've witnessed here tonight, I want to say a heartfelt thank you. Thank you for helping us celebrate Bermudian talent, excellence, and resilience. We'll see you next time.